Well, the thing that I thought was really amazing was when you came up to me at the AGM and said, Dan, would you like to do these videos for uh, UK yeah. butterflies? Absolutely. Well, I felt the work you'd done with the butterflies of the biosphere were really excellent, really um, pulled people in, generated interest. Um, and I felt that what you were doing was applicable for the whole of the British Isles, not just uh, within the biosphere. I don't know if you realise, but when you said that, it seemed such a throwaway comment that I really didn't take you seriously. <laughs> I, I actually had to take go away for a bit and think about it. And yeah, then... people don't take me seriously quite often. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but um, no, I, th I, re I mean, one of the whole objectives of UK butterflies is to foster an interest. Um, you know, get people interested in butterflies and care about them as much as we do. Uh, and for me, I think going into video is like the next big thing. Um, it's probably moving slightly slower than I was expecting, actually. But we've got a huge army of people who take stills. Yeah. Uh, and we use those photographs and make them available and get a lot of interest through that uh, medium. Um, but I think video is the next, the next thing. Uh, I mean, originally, um, I thought it would be great for showing certain characteristics of some species, like the courtship flight of a silver water artillery or the, the gliding flight of a white admiral, something you can't capture in a still. Yeah. But I think the approach you've taken through the, you know, the interactive interviews, I think really uh, wasn't something I was really thinking about. But when you did what you did, I thought, you know, that's just amazing. We should, we should broaden it. Yeah, I suppose it becomes about the butterflies, but also about the people as well, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think the people dimension is just so important. I mean, we've got experts all around the country, whether they're just enthusiasts or, you know, professionals. Uh, and I think getting their insights and, you know, just simply understanding how they've got, you know, got their interest in the species they've been studying um, is a great message, you know, to generate um, interest, to encourage others to take as much care about our environment as we do. And um, yeah, I, thought, I just thought it was great. Yeah, and one of the things which has struck me while we've been sort of considering this is, is the idea that there has been quite an interesting historical dimension to what's been going on over the last 30 or 40 years. And in a way, I think it's quite important to record that, isn't it? I, I completely agree. I mean, some of the, um, I, I mean, I read, uh, avidly and, and it goes all the way back to you know 1634 when the first uh, documentation around British butterflies especially was um, was published um, but I absolutely agree that the knowledge in the heads of some of the experts who've contributed to that literature you know what a great way to bring that to life again not just through their written works but by actually going out and talking to them. Well, it's funny because I was, I was talking to Martin Warren about this project mm -hmm. and and we were discussing briefly the Heath Fertility and he said to me do you know, Dan, uh, the story of the Heath Fertility is something I used to tell about 20 years ago. He said, but I haven't told it since then. And as a consequence, yeah. Yeah. you know, I suspect there's lots of people that don't know the story. So there's one I'd like to do. Oh, I'll be, I'll, there are so many historic, you know, species with historic uh, a, a, a background to them. Uh, I mean, currently I'm thinking about looking at the, the checkered skipper. And I go back and I look at the, the you know, the PhD thesis of Neil Ravenscroft for that. Martin, again, with his work on the Heath Artillery, Wood White. And the stories, the backdrop to what was behind the work they've done, I think is going to be as interesting as the work that emerged from the work they did. And I think just capturing that for posterity would just be awesome. I mean, it's, you know, it's something you can't get from anywhere else. One of my concerns is that, that when you go whizzing off to uh, Scotland, you might mm -hmm. have a little bit of time. Uh, whereas I, in my day job being a school teacher, means I'll probably be restricted, particularly <laughs> during that sort of that May, June period, mm -hmm. to like weekends. And so I can't always be sure of whether I can't always be sure I've got to have the time to get the really good shots. But in mm -hmm. a way, I think there's so much, isn't there, of really good shots. Yeah, there is. So, um, so first of all, I'm very fortunate in the work I do. You know, I do a lot of travelling with work as, as it happens, and I know that over the next couple of years, I'm going to be spending a lot of time working in Glasgow and Edinburgh, and that's how, you know, I've, I've sort of focused in uh, in a certain area with the Chequered Skipper. Um, but yeah, so so, so I agree that um, when we're talking about video, it's not just about capturing video footage of the butterfly, and that's the only thing we're going to show. I think. You can get a really good mix between uh, maybe the, the interviews that you do with the experts, uh, the still photography that, you know, we have armies of individuals who are taking fantastic photographs that we yeah. can make use of, uh, and really bringing that together. And what I see is almost a, 
I, I, I mean, you'd have to tell me. We'd need to talk it through. But almost a mini documentary of, you know, here's you know some interesting things around each species that you're not going to see anywhere else. It's never been brought together in this way. And I think that's what, you know, you've really excelled at with some of the work you've done. Well, that's very kind of you. But I guess the other thing is, of course, that we can't put the bar too high because there's n you can't talk about everything that there is about a species in a short film. But well, you can get a flavour, can't you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So I think we're going to have to... Um, uh, the, the other thing is you don't want to create, you know, a two-hour documentary on one species. I, I personally would love that, but I suspect most people are interested in something slightly more compact, uh, so, you know, a little more focused on uh, those uh, areas that maybe they weren't uh, that familiar with uh, and bring those things to the fore rather than all of the stuff that is probably, you know, quite um, prominent in all of the books, the literature that's out there. So, so those, I'd, I, in fact, the interviews with the experts, I think, would be great because they're going to provide little twists, you know, things that people may not have thought about. Um, yeah, well. and I tell you, uh, on Butterflies of the Biosphere, mm -hmm. One of the things which I found out really, really quite quickly was that local people obviously have local knowledge, uh, yeah. and, and, and therefore that doesn't always get into the mainstream literature, or it doesn't always get shared between yeah. enthusiasts nationally. So I would love, and maybe even this video now would be a great way of letting people know that we're doing this, mm -hmm. and, and so that people, say from BC branches all over the UK, might, might get in contact with us and say, Hey, we've got a story about Absolutely. this fairly common butterfly, yeah. the large white maybe, you know, but this is an interesting story and that's, that's where it could become something which is really adding to what we know. Oh, I completely agree and, and, and I take the point earlier about, you know, we can't all travel to Scotland and things like that. Uh, I remember talking with Martin Warren uh, a long time ago and, and um, he was saying, you know, there's so much that general enthusiasts can do almost in their back garden. There is, there is so much that we don't know in, in, a, in, a, in a sense about our commonest species. Yeah. Uh, and, but I think by reaching out to the broader community, um, not only will they have their own stories to tell about this, you know, their local species or even familiar species, widespread species, that maybe provide another twist on something that we weren't that familiar with. But you know, a good example, Northern Brown Argus. Yes. So um, Ian Cow up in northeast uh, 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 England and Scotland, and, you know, on the borders, um, has done some fantastic stuff on Northern Brown Argus. Uh, and in fact, one of the chaps that we met up with gets Northern Brown Argus in his back garden. You isn't think? It, yeah. <laughs> isn't it funny that you, you should think of an example, because I immediately thought of the Meadow Brown mm -hmm. and that great book that Dowdswell wrote. Now, Absolutely. I know that Dowdswell and Ford, obviously, are no longer with us, but I think Paul Brakefield would be a good person Absolutely, to have a chat yeah. with. I'm sure he'd be able to tell us some of that, that, that story. Yeah, and I personally would love to hear stories about Dowdswell and Ford. I mean... Uh, yeah, so, it would be amazing. So getting that insight, yeah. So, so you know, getting that, um, I know it's one step removed, as it were. But, so we're so. going to have to do a list, aren't we, of all the people we'd like to interview. Uh, we are, we are. Um, relating to each species. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When I was a kid, uh, Nick Davis's work on the speckled wood was the, the first real legitimization of my interest in butterflies. There it was in a scientific paper. Uh, I can't tell you how many heroes I've got in this entire space. And I'd love to work on that list with you, but um, yeah, there's just so many people who've done such fantastic work. And in a way, they really deserve a wider audience, don't they? Oh, they do, absolutely. I mean, uh, this, uh, is, this is for posterity, <coughs> I guess. Um, absolutely, and I, uh, absolutely. And um, uh, I, I think a lot of people don't necessarily have access to the resources that we might. So um, I'm very fortunate I've got connections with um, museums and um, universities where I can get access to articles going back to whenever. But not everyone has that level of access, and I feel very fortunate that I do. But by actually providing that work, the work, works that have been created, by just talking to individuals is, uh, first of all, it's much easier to absorb because yeah. you're watching a video, not having to trawl through 20 papers all yeah. describing one aspect of a particular species. But, uh, but yeah, I, th I think, you know, for posterity, as you said, it's going to be a fantastic resource. I, I must warn you right there and now, <laughs> I, and, and one of the things which concerns me is that uh, if we do lots of research behind it, I can imagine lots won't come into a video because you'll find the human dynamic starts flooding through as well. Do you know what I mean? There'll be people talking about their own life histories and therefore you won't be difficult because how much do you put into a video? So you, yeah, you try to get the balance right. Absolutely. So I, th I, th I think there will be some common themes that we need to um, ensure are discussed within each video. Uh, I mean, one of the things that um, I could contribute maybe from the UKB side is uh, you know, what's that checklist of things that should always be discussed? Because uh, we have something similar in the species descriptions. 
uh, and make sure that certain topics do get discussed consistently to some degree. But I think each species will have its own nuance. So if you're going to talk about large blue, it's obvious that you want to spend a lot of time talking about the life cycle, mm. uh, you know, the association with ants uh, and all of that kind of thing. And I, and I think that will be true. You know, even something as uh, common as a large white, the fact that it is uh, parasitized so frequently yeah. is something that I think should be focused on. I want to see those parasitic grubs and the yellow cocoons and all of that kind yeah, of stuff. Sure, sure. So, yeah. Well, uh, I've got about five years before I retire. Okay. <laughs> Could be a good project for the next five years. I thought you were going to say, let's wait till you retire. But no. yeah, <laughs> um, absolutely. I, I don't see this as a short term thing at all. I mean, some of the work I'm doing as well is, uh, you know, very long term. You know, my plans with the checkered skipper are going to um, take at least three years to, because um, I know I'm going to be spending that much time up in Scotland to, to come to any kind of conclusion if they do. Um, but um, I'm not, uh, for me, because I'm so interested in immature stages, um, I always go back to Frohawk. Uh, so he wrote those two volumes, the fantastic work, Natural History of British Butterflies, and it took him 24 years to get the level of detail that he was after. So I don't see this as a, uh, something we're going to do in a year. It's going to take five years, as you said, to Perhaps cover the at least. Yeah, at least. Anyway, we'll always but, see about but, that. But I honestly think it would be leaving something for posterity of value, of interest, and be a, just an awesome resource. Well, let's hope so. I mean, I don't want to be arrogant, but, you know, I hope that, <laughs> I hope that it, it does actually... I, thought, I think you've made a good start with the Butterflies of the Biosphere videos. They've well, been really, really excellent. Thanks very much, Pete. Yeah, pleasure. Mm -hmm.